In this video I'm going to show to you how to build a simple Wadin application from scratch in a couple of minutes. I'm going to use Eclipse environment in writing the application, but you can use any IDE you want to. So first of all, let's open up Eclipse and then install Wadin plugin. So I go to Eclipse Marketplace and then search for Wadin and then just click install for the Wadin plugin. So you just select Wadin plugin for Eclipse and click next. As always, after installing new plugins, Eclipse needs to be restarted. Now we are ready to start building our application. So let's create a new Wadin project. Wadin project is basically just a web project. Let's call this document manager. We want to use Tomcat for the deployment and then we can want to also use the latest Wadin version and deploy as a servlet. You could also deploy as portlet or Google App Engine. Call our application document manager and maybe our user interface class could be called like docui. Let's create the project. So what gets created inside the project it's just a normal web contents directory with the web inf directory and web xml. In web xml there is just one servlet defined. So this is varin servlet over here and it says that when the user goes to this URI we show him our doc UI. So that's it. That's automatic and if you are using the latest Java EE version you can skip the web xml altogether. The other thing that we have over here is just one Java file, docui. So basically this docui creates a simple user interface. Let's run this to see how it looks like. We want to run this on a local Tomcat server. Then the Tomcat gets started and we can see the UI. Our application gets run in Safari in this case. So it's just a simple application where I click a button and show something below it. But we want to start from scratch. So first let's just delete whatever we have over here. And we have an empty UI class. I'm going to just create a combo box to show the documents in the UI. Let's call that doc list. And then we need uh, a list of documents to show in here. In a real world application, we would be using something like SQL database or JPA layer or something like that. In here, we are just using a file system. So I create a new file system container and call that docs and point that to my local file system. And I should be having some files in temp directory. Then I connect this data source to our combo box on the screen. And then just put this one as a contents of our UI. So let's run this. I just reload the page in the web browser and get a combo box over here and can list files in this directory. Things like the autocomplete work out of the box. Unfortunately this doesn't show anything yet, so let's put also the contents of the file on the screen. First, let's create that some layout to show both doc list as well as the document on the screen. So now we have a split panel on the screen and then we just add this contents combo box inside the split panel. We also need a way to show this file. So let's create a new label over here. It 
can be empty in the beginning, but I want to use HTML format of the file. I'll add this as well to the screen. Let's take a look how it looks like. So now we have combo box on the left side and a split panel and then a label on the right side. So let's add an event handler for the combo box. I'll add a value change listener for here and create it as an anonymous inner class. And whenever a file gets selected, I want to show that in the doc view. So we put a data source for the doc view. And this is just a text file. And we can get the file from the event. Like this. Because the combo box is on the client side, we should ask it to send events after we had chosen the file to show. And let's try this one out. So now we can see the contents of the file on the right side. Next thing, let's replace this combo box with a table. One of the handy things in Vardin is that the APIs are compatible between many components. So, so we can just replace this one with the table, like this. Table by default doesn't support selection. So we have the enable selection for the table. So now we have a list of files on the left side and we can browse through them. As you can see, when I'm changing the size of the split panel, table doesn't follow it. So let's ask table to use all the space given by the split panel over here. So I just set the size of the table to be full. The next thing we want to do is to add an editor component to be able to edit the files. For this, I'm going to create a new component. New warning composite component. Let's call this doc editor. And it creates a normal Java file that creates the editor. But we can also go to the design mode and start composing the component visually. So let's first use a tab sheet. I just drag this tab sheet over here. We can resize it, bind the right side to the right side of the container. Same for the height. And now we have a tab sheet. It doesn't look like much yet, but let's add components within it. I'll add a read text area for editing, as well as text area for ed editing the HTML of the files. So let's resize this to take full space given by the tab sheet and do the same thing for the reach area as well. I also changed the names of the components created. Let's call this one Vusivug. And the another one could be HTML. Actually, we also want to change the tabs. So this could be HTML tab and the other one could be a Vusivug tab. Then we can just save the component and start using that in our user interface. So we could just replace this label with our new doc editor. But the doc editor doesn't implement data source yet, so I just fix this by creating that method inside the editor. I just go to the source to see the new method over here. Let's see how it looks like first. So now we have the editor on the right side. It doesn't connect to the selections on the left side yet. We can connect this easily by implementing the newly created set property data source method. We just connect this property, let's call it something like doc, to our HTML component like this, and then do the same for the Visivug editor. And now we can just select files from the left side, 
we could start editing this. Let's call this interface and a couple of exclamation marks. We could jump between HTML and Visivuk. And if I find the exclamation marks over here, they are here. Let's just write foo over here. And we can go to different files, come back. These are saved to the file system, as you can see. So we just created our first Warden application. The next thing that you could be doing is going to warden.com, click learn and tutorial and it shows you a simple application that you can walk through easily. And you can go to warden.com slash book and there is a full book about Warden that you can read and start learning Warden today. Thank you for watching.